Hey guys, Will here. So we've reached the end of another year and as is tradition, it is time to take you through some of our favorite things that we've looked at throughout the course of 2023. Now, we've done things a little bit differently this year. We've had a lot of stuff come through this year that has been really, I guess, excelled in some areas, maybe not been quite so strong in other areas. So it seemed logical this year to break things up into multiple categories rather than just giving you a random list of five products. So the categories for this year, as I read off my cheat notes here, are best wheelbase, best wheel, most innovative product, biggest game changer, best value for money in the mid to high end, best value for money in the more entry level, biggest surprise, and I've also snuck biggest disappointment in there as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so this is gonna be a general overview of each one of these products. If you're wanting more information on anything that we talk about today, we do of course have more detailed reviews right here on the Boosted Media channel, or just hit up boostedmedia.net for all the reviews that we've done right back to the beginning of when we started doing this, and there are hundreds of them, so definitely make sure you check that out. So let's get started now with Best Wheelbase. Now you might have seen if you watched our recent reviews, we actually went back through and retested every single wheelbase that we have here at Boosted Media to get a sense of what they're like with the latest drivers, latest firm where things change over time, obviously, and some of those reviews are pretty old now, and I like to try and stay up to speed with how things feel so we can have as accurate comparisons as possible when we're reviewing new products as they come out. So we did go back through and retest pretty much everything over the course of the last couple of months. And uh, look, the, the basic end result of that was that I still feel like the Acer Tech Invicta in terms of raw force feedback does have the best force feedback available on the market at the moment. Look, it is a very, very close race, you, you can't really go wrong these days with most direct drive wheelbases. They've, they really have come a very long way over the last couple of years, and there isn't really a bad choice at any given price point within the market. So it really does very much come down to a lot of other factors in terms of what might best suit you. Uh, you know, things like the wider ecosystem, compatibility with other products, compatibility with consoles, for example. But in terms of raw quality of force feedback, Got to hand it to the Acer Tech Invicta this year. That really did surprise me with just the extra level of detail that it provides in terms of those really sharp responses, really, uh, I guess, granular detail without having any sort of robotic feel or notchiness or any of those adverse things that you sometimes get when you crank up those details. So they've done a really, really good job there, particularly as a new brand entering into Direct Drive for the very first time. That really did surprise us quite a lot. Now, they also released their Forte and their La Prima wheelbases too. And uh, look, those are also very, very good. I think in particular, the uh, La Prima wheelbase is an absolutely fantastic value proposition at the moment, particularly if you look at the uh, Tony Canan version, which is available through Micro Center at a very attractive price, bundled with a wheel and their uh, La Prima pedals as well. So definitely worth checking those out. I also really like the approach that they've taken with their more open ecosystem. Now, I have seen quite a few people complain that they don't like the idea of being forced to use the, uh, the Acer Tech quick release, not being to just bolt whatever quick release you want onto the nose of the motor. Now I can certainly understand why people might feel that way and there were a few things about those products that I did kind of scratch my head about, in particular some of the mounting solutions and just the unnecessary complexity around that and they have done quite a bit of work since then which we'll be visiting in 2024 uh, talking about how they've improved things on that front. But look overall I think when you consider also their open ecosystem with the, uh, with the straight USB connection that you have at the wheel so that you can connect basically whatever wheel you want and not have to go back to your PC or back to a port on the base. They've just done a really good job overall and that is the reason why this year I've given them best wheelbase. Now it is also worth mentioning that the new Fanatec Club Sport DD and DD Plus are also very good. At this point in time we have only kind of done a first look. We are still waiting for final release drivers for those. We are also waiting for the final integration of uh, Full Force, their new Force Feedback 2.0 technology which adds more granular detail similar to what we have with uh, uh, True Force with the Logitech G Pro and uh, G923, for example. But we want to wait and see that actually integrated into some games before we really kind of flesh that out further. I also do really want to see Fanatec improve things in terms of customer service and response times uh, very, very soon as well. So uh, we'll definitely be visiting that when we get into our full reviews of, uh, of the CSDD and DD+. They are both very, very good products in their own right as well. But I do want to see how that develops a little bit more before I'm happy to uh, give a final verdict, I guess, on those products. So that is best wheelbase. 
best wheel now. So this was a bit of a uh, a bit of a head scratcher for me as well. My personal favorite wheel price aside this year has been the uh, Grid Engineering MPX. You've seen it in a lot of my uh, GT3 videos recently. Really fantastic build quality. Not the most feature rich wheel on the market by any means, but what it does, it does exceptionally well. Has a really nice feeling in the hands. And for all the things that I look for in a sim racing wheel, it just nails it for me. So subjectively, personal preference wise, that is my choice. However, we also reviewed the Cube Controls F Core wheel this year, and I was really, really impressed with the build quality of that wheel and uh, what it brings to the table in terms of value for money. So if you're after a formula style wheel that has a really solid and high end feel to it, but uh, does away with a few of the features that you might find in more expensive wheels to bring the price point down, then that is definitely one that is worth checking out as well. So a bit of a tie in my mind between the two of those, but definitely value for money wise, the F Core would be the winner there. So then we move on into most innovative products. Now, look, it's a bit of an interesting one again, because there hasn't been a lot of genuine innovation in sim racing in terms of new groundbreaking technologies that have come out in the last couple of years. We've seen a lot of miniaturization of uh, things like direct drive technology, for example. If you cast your mind back to say 2018, uh, we just started to see the likes of the Fanatec DD1, DD2 coming out. Before that, it was basically the OSW wheels, which had a big control box, a massive motor. So a lot bigger footprint back then, a lot less energy efficient than what we have these days as well. But in terms of something that actually brings new technology to the table, something that brings an experience that we've never experienced before, you've probably already guessed what it's gonna be. It's gonna be the SimuCube Active Pedals. Now, unfortunately, they are still prohibitively expensive for most people. And uh, you know that they're not something that I would recommend that every single person aspires to own simply because you know what they bring to the driving experience in terms of things that's actually gonna make you faster and more consistent. We're talking about that last few percent here where you're spending big dollars for relatively small gains. But that said, I do really love to see a company that's pushing the envelope. So although it is a very expensive product, naturally the knock-on effect from that is that that technology becomes cheaper over time as more competition enters the market. Although we haven't reviewed it yet, we have had a brief look at the uh, haptic feedback system for pedals by SimMagic as well and been very impressed with that too, although it works a little bit differently and doesn't quite provide the same feature set that the SimiCube Active pedals do. But no doubt over time we will see that technology adapted to other implementations and become cheaper over time. So really happy to see that innovation driving things forward. Biggest game changer. Now a lot of you probably thought that that was actually going to be the SimiCube Active pedals, but as I said, didn't make a massive difference in terms of the driving experience, although they are very cool. Biggest game changer for me this year was actually the big screen beyond VR headset. And the reason I chose that is simply because I've always found VR to be a little bit tricky. I, I find the weight and just the general awkwardness gives me claustrophobia and even though whenever I put a VR headset on, you know, I absolutely love the experience. I always find myself ultimately going back to my triple screens simply because, you know, it's a little bit clunky, it's a little bit claustrophobic, it's a little bit uncomfortable, and all of those things kind of pull away from the experience. Now, we have seen a lot of really awesome headsets coming out recently. Uh, the Vajo Aero came out a little while ago now, more than a year ago, and that was, uh, that was a pretty big game changer in terms of VR technology. We saw the Pimax Crystal come out this year as well, which we initially had a pretty poor experience with, but we did go back and retest that recently and had a much better experience. In terms of visual quality, field of view, and all those things, the Pimax Crystal is probably the better headset overall. But in terms of just having a small lightweight headset that is you know, absolutely brilliant for sim racing where you're moving around a lot and you wanna feel as free and untethered as possible, that particular headset did an absolutely fantastic job. And we actually have a new rig which we're gonna be showing you uh, very, very soon, which uh, is gonna be based primarily around VR usage. So you're gonna be seeing a lot more VR content most likely on the channel in 2024. So it's definitely something to stay tuned for. We will of course be testing some of the headsets uh, throughout that process, but I have a feeling that I'm probably gonna land on that big screen headset as my daily driver headset moving forward. So biggest genuine game changer for me this year has been the big screen beyond VR headset. Moving on now to best value for money in the mid to high end range. So that award this year is split between the VNM pedals and the VRS Direct Force Pro pedals that we reviewed throughout the course of this year. Now we reviewed a lot of pedals this year. We've reviewed some really good pedals which offer good value for money. We've reviewed some pedals which looked really cool but didn't really represent good value for money at all compared to some of these other options. But yeah, the two outstanding ones were those VNM pedals and the VRS Direct Force Pro pedals. Both of those are absolutely fantastic. They provide a fantastic driving experience, plenty of adjustability, 
capability. You can adapt them to feel pretty much however you want from you know rock solid like a GT3 or F1 car all the way through to a more street car feel. And uh, look, I mean, I, I just every time I, I every time I see a post or somebody asks me what pedals I would recommend. It's really hard to go past either set of those. I think they both do an absolutely fantastic job. Now they're not cheap, but they're a lot cheaper than a lot of other options, which I think aren't actually as good as what they are. So definitely check out both of those if you're looking at getting into more high-end sim racing pedals. So that brings us now to best value for money in the entry level category. Now this might be a bit of a controversial one simply because I did have quite a few people contact me and say that they weren't quite as impressed with this product as I was, but I felt like it added uh, you know, a genuine new level of immersion to the sim racing experience at a relatively low price point. So this one goes to the next level racing HF8 haptic gaming pad. Now, this is an interesting product, a rather innovative product as well. Uh, it has a, a, an array, I guess you could say, of vibration motors that are built into this pad, which you sit inside your sim racing seat or you know, just on your gaming chair. And it uses uh, either Sim Hub or their own software, which wasn't great. The Sim Hub experience is a lot better. Um, but it uses the software to generate various different effects throughout the pad itself. Now, while that doesn't sound super realistic, because obviously in a car, you're not feeling the vibration of the wheel in a specific spot in your leg. What happens is over time, your brain kind of learns to identify those various different effects as cues that it can use to understand what the car is doing a little bit better. So while the initial experience might not be absolutely mind blowing with the thing, you might be a little bit underwhelmed with it. I did find that it actually did add genuine immersion to the game, which was missing in an entry level sim rig at least. Uh, so yeah, I felt like for the money, it actually did a pretty darn good job. It would have been better if it had vibration transducers in it rather than, uh, rather than vibration motors, but that would of course make it more expensive. Now the experience on consoles wasn't fantastic because it's just using an audio output, but if you're on a PC, I think it is worth checking out that review. Check out some other people's reviews as well. Read some customer reviews too to get a good overall picture. But for me personally, subjectively, I actually thought that it was a really good product for the price. So check that one out as well. That is my winner for best value for money in the entry level. And that brings us now to biggest surprise of 2023. So this one goes to Sim Magic. Now you guys will be aware that we did have some problems with them a number of years ago now, which meant that we weren't comfortable reviewing their products for a number of years. Look, back when we originally reviewed their products with the, uh, with the M10 wheelbase, it wasn't a particularly impressive experience overall. We did then review the SimMagic Alpha after that, and it was pretty darn good, although the software side of things did let it down a little bit. But look, we've, we've got all their gear here at the moment. Uh, we just actually received the, uh, the, uh, the Alpha U as well. And look, we've been going through the testing process. We haven't released our reviews of it yet. So uh, it may end up winning best wheelbase for next year's category, I don't know, but... Uh, Right now, I can tell you that that has been the biggest surprise for me of 2023. The, the leaps that they've made in terms of not only their attitude in general, but the quality of their products, the expansive ecosystem that they have now as well, in particular, their uh, H pattern slash sequential shifter is absolutely fantastic value for money, really well built, and a lot of really just genuinely intelligent design choices in their products as well. So definitely one to watch out for. Uh, as I said, they're expanding their ecosystem pretty rapidly as well. And uh, yeah, definitely one that we're, I'm genuinely looking forward to getting more stuck into their products and reviewing them in early 2024. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe for those reviews. So that is all of the positive stuff. Now uh, we need to talk about the biggest disappointment of 2023. Now this isn't actually something that we looked at in 2023 and that is kind of part of the problem here. So unfortunately, this one goes to Logitech with their G Pro wheelbase. Now, the problem that I have with this, I actually thought that it was a really good product when we reviewed it, although I did have a few complaints around just the, the physical footprint and design of the thing. But the disappointment here is the fact that when this product was released over a year ago now, they kind of talked about the fact that it had the quick release on it. They were going to be able to release different wheels that would uh, you know, give you all kinds of adaptability. We were expecting to see Proline handbrakes and shifters and all kinds of accessories. And I know a lot of people bought those products, were buying into what they thought was going to be an ecosystem rather than just a standalone product. And while we have seen them come out with an adapter, which we looked at a couple of months ago, which does let you use their driving force shifter, we haven't seen anything in the pro line. And I'm sure that most people that are spending that kind of money on a, on a wheelbase aren't really wanting to use a really, really entry level shifter like, uh, like what you get with the driving force one. So particularly uh, if you're on a console and you bought one of those, I can imagine quite a lot of people would have been disappointed because you simply can't just plug in another brand's handbrake or another brand's shifter. So you, you're basically stuck. And uh, I think that that really sucks. So I do wanna see from Logitech 
some sort of communication that, you know, just to let us know what's going on. Are they still planning on expanding that ecosystem? Is it dead in the water? At this point, I just don't know. I have touched base with them a number of times throughout the course of 2023. And the answer that I've gotten is quite simply, we wouldn't have made it a quick release. We wouldn't have made it a removable wheel if we weren't expecting to uh, release further products. But they haven't been able to give me any sort of timeline on when that's going to be happening. And yeah, look, I mean, it's been personally disappointing for me because, uh, you know, I was genuinely enthused about the product. I genuinely thought it was a good product. And I know a lot of people bought that product off the back of that review. And uh, I know now that a lot of people would be disappointed because uh, it hasn't expanded in the way that we were expecting it to. Now, I guess they didn't really make any promises, but yeah, I guess at the same time, a lot of us were expecting more out of the G Pro line than what we've, uh, what we've seen in uh, 2023, which is basically nothing. So Logitech, if you're watching, let us know what the heck is going on with the G Pro line. And yeah, guys, that wraps things up for 2023. So as I said, we've got a lot of really exciting stuff coming in 2024. We have a really, really super cool sim racing rig, which uh, we're going to be sharing with you guys very, very soon, which I'm personally very, very excited about. Uh, we've got all that sim magic stuff, which we're going to be checking out. We're going to be revisiting some uh, SimuCube stuff as well. All kinds of things happening in 2024. So it's gonna be a huge year, not only for sim racing, but for Boosted Media. Lastly, I wanna say a big thank you to all of you guys that have supported us in uh, 2023. It's been an absolutely amazing year. It's not been without its challenges and uh, frustrations, but overall it's been an absolutely fantastic year and we couldn't have done it without you guys. So from the bottom of my heart and uh, everybody involved here at the team at Boosted Media, we thank you every single one of you for watching and sharing these videos. Every single way that you support us, it's all greatly appreciated and we couldn't do it without you. So on behalf of all of us, here at Boosted Media. We hope you had a safe and happy Christmas and have a safe and happy new year. And we'll see you all again in 2024. Bye.